Unitarian Universal. <laughs> We're rowdy today, aren't we? <laughs> Unitarian Universalism is confidence in a continuity that spans all time. It is respectful of the past, but not limited to it. It is trust in growing and conspiracy with change. When I first accidentally stumbled upon Unitarian Universalism, I was smitten, and I fell deeply in love with this progressive faith. It welcomed me to be who I was. I could be wholly me here. I didn't have to hide any part of who I was. I was loved just as I was. To a young gay man who had been forced out of his religion of origin, that was huge. Even better, I didn't have to leave my brain at the door. <laughs> Unitarian Universalism welcomed all my questions, all my doubts, all my suspicions, Ambitions, all my evolving answers and discoveries about life and spirituality, it was all welcome. Here, I was encouraged to shape a spiritual life that felt and feels authentic to me, to you, your own spiritual path. The message was so clear Come as you are and join us on this spiritual journey. Unitarian Universalism said that I was not alone, but connected to a caring community of spiritual seekers who wanted to build a more loving world. Another thing that I really loved about Unitarian Universalism is that it is a living tradition. Could we just say that? Living tradition. So what that means is we have a tradition. We have centuries and centuries of deep and meaningful history and theology that we build upon. But that first word is so important. It is living, which means it has to, it must reflect what we learn, what we understand, how we change over time so that we remain relevant to this Day. I also fell in love with our then seven principles. Though many of us here today fell in love with those principles, others are just discovering them. Some of you maybe didn't even know there were them. And some perhaps just recently found them. But these are the core seven principles on which Unitarian Universalism currently rests. And I invite you, as you're comfortable, just to say them with me. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another, and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience, and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large, the goal of a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Now oh, let's give, not yet, Ian. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> go away. There we go. Let's give those seven. <laughs> now recently there was a feeling that those seven principles weren't enough, that they weren't directly addressing justice and a need to confront white supremacy culture within our faith tradition. We needed explicit language about being anti-racist 
and anti-oppression. And so congregations around the country in a grassroots effort began to adopt what was the eighth principle, which we hope will do just that. We are one of those congregations, several hundred, who have adopted the eighth principle, and I'm going to invite you to join me in those words now. Journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other impressions in ourselves and our institutions. Now, although many of us love the spirit of those words, some of us think it's a little too wordy and it doesn't really flow with the feel of the previous seven, but we hope that this would change when it uh, was refashioned as this came to the national level and was adopted across the denomination. So, these principles, and here's a little bit of dryness, so um, I told you. These principles are outlined in section two of the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association, of which this congregation is a member along with 2,000 other congregations across the country. The bylaws also state that periodically we need to look at these principles and purposes to make sure that they reflect who we need to be at this moment in time. It tells us we have to ask, do they communicate our core values? Do they challenge us in the right way as we need to be challenged in this time? In short, our bylaws tell us periodically we have to ask, are new words or new challenges needed? Now, I really liked that. Rather than being set in stone by people from the past, our UU faith challenges us to remain relevant to the times that we're in, evolving as the times and as we are changing. As we heard earlier, Unitarian Universalism is confidence in a continuity that spans all time. It is respectful of the past, but not limited to it. It is trust in growing and my favorite part, conspiracy with change. But nearly 40 years have passed since the last revision of these principles and purposes. So think about that. Some of us here today weren't even alive in 1984. And for those of us who were, I suspect that we've changed a lot or learned a lot over the course of 40 years. We are in many ways different than who we were 40 years ago. This is also true for some aspects of Unitarian Universalism. As our Unitarian Universalist organization points out, Unitarian Universalism has grown in its understanding of systemic oppressions such as racism, ableism, and heteronormative beliefs. However, many people feel that this language does not reflect these learnings. But there are other ways that some people are concerned about the relevancy of our principles in the wording. Many UUs, Unitarian Universalists, so when I say UU, it's Unitarian Universalist. Many of us, if we're honest, really struggle with how to define Unitarian Universalism to others. We know what it feels like, but when we have to put it into words, it gets hard, even with our seven or eight principles. We hear from many younger UUs that the principles just don't seem relevant to the new Unitarian Universalism that they are now shaping and aspiring to embody. For some young people, it just doesn't resonate with them. Many black, indigenous, 
people of color, Unitarian Universalists, feel that these words lock us into the white supremacy culture in which they were shaped. They say, if we really want to be who we say we want to become, truly anti-racist, multicultural, then we have to have something new to follow into our future. One thing I learned recently that blew my mind, some of the words in our principles carry true trauma. For instance, I love the first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. The worth of every person. To someone whose ancestors were enslaved, to someone whose ancestors were bought and sold at the slave market, the idea of a human being having worth feels very different than it does to those of us who do not have those ancestors. Others want a few words that are easily remembered, similar to our church's own mission statement, which is love inclusively, grow spiritually, serve gratefully, and work for justice. Most of us know that, and we can say it. Some people think that our principles just have too many words to easily know them all. And I think if we took a show of hands, how many of us could recite fairly accurately all eight principles? I think most of us, except for Laura, <laughs> will come up short, <clears throat> myself included. Some point out that the word principles feels somewhat cold, maybe legalistic, corporate, and very head-centered. Some point out that the principles feel like a list, and they want something that contains emotion and invites experience. Some feel that the principles stress individualism over connection to community, and they say in these dangerous and divisive times, we need to emphasize connection to community because we have rough days ahead. Others point out that our current framework for defining our faith strangely leaves out the one word that many of us believe is central to our faith. Does anybody notice what word is missing from our eight principles? Love. We say love is the center of who we are, and yet what we say we are doesn't have the word love. So all of this collectively, even though many of us love these eight principles, have led our association's National Board of Trustees to form a national working group to study 40 years after these principles were adopted, and they're asking if now is the time for a change. Again, this was and is happening nationally, involving Unitarian Universalists nationwide, as required by our bylaws to look at the language that we use. The working group talked to Unitarian Universalists from all across the country and invited a year of conversation that was thrilling and invigorating and revealing. From what they heard and felt, they crafted a draft of something new that still has the spirit of our eight principles and, in fact, almost all the ideas of the eight principles and many of the words from our eight principles are included, but with a different framework and some new words. These are all just proposals that will need to be approved at our next General Assembly in June. They've also proposed to change the sources section of Article 2, but we're going to focus on that at another time. So the first change from this working group was to explicitly put love at the center of our faith. And so our new framework begins with a preamble that states up front the purpose of the Unitarian Universalist Association is to actively engage its members in the transformation of the world through liberating love. I love it. And then they add, oh, you can bring it back. Yeah, we'll clap for that. <clears throat> and then they go a little bit further. Love 
<clears throat> they define it. Love is the power which holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. Hang on to that word values. You're going to hear it again. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared, shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. I like spiritual discipline of love. I imagine there is not anyone in here who is going to take offense at any of those words. But <laughs> then come the big changes. And I want to give us permission to love these, to hate them, to feel so-so about them, or when you hear this, to feel really sad or angry, happy or so excited about it. And I'm going to confess that my first reaction to these changes included a few very unministerial words. <laughs> And I am still struggling with some of this change because change is hard. And change brings the loss of something that we're used to. To gain something new means we need to give something up. The first big change. The principles have evolved into values. The eight principles have evolved into six shared values. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are. And now, the second big change. The working group wanted to find a way to quickly and simply show love at the center of Unitarian Universalism, surrounded by those six values, so before we see lots of words, so we are not solely language-based, some people like graphics, we get a visual representation of who we collectively aspire to be as Unitarian Universalists, and here is that graphic. Love is at the center with our flaming chalice, surrounded by six values interdependence, equity, transformation, pluralism, generosity, justice. And then this framework lets us go deeper and get more specific using this framework. First, we get the value. Then we're going to get words that are defining that value. And then we get the covenant or the aspiration that we work together to achieve, to make that value come alive in the world. So it's not just an idea, but it becomes an action. And covenant is just a fancy word that means agreements or profit promises about how we're going to be in relationship with each other and the world. It's, it's less about how we think and more about what we do. So first, interdependence. And you're going to like these words, I promise. We honor the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. So our first value is actually our seventh principle, elevating connection to be the first thing we say. We're not saying we are individuals. We are saying, first, we are all connected to all life on this planet. And then we covenant. With humility and reverence, we covenant to protect Earth and all beings from exploitation by creating and nurturing sustainable relationships of repair, mutuality, and justice. Our second value, pluralism. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. So that's the first principle right there, the individual. So we're also affirming the sacredness of you and you and you. And then our covenant. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. There's that free and responsible search that we like. 
We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. So the fourth principle is there as well. You, we still have the freedom to discern our authentic spiritual beliefs. The next value is justice. Now here, in a moment, you're going to see we take that long, wordy eighth principle and it comes together in a much more concise way, but it embodies the essence of the eighth principle and everyone nationally who is working towards the eighth principle says this is what we wanted. And so the definition, we work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. And the covenant is we covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions in our congregation and society at large. So that takes the eighth principle and the fifth principle and turns them into the value of justice. The next value is transformation, defined as we adapt to the changing world. We always have throughout our centuries of history. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages, never complete and never perfect. What religion do you know in the world says, hey, where we are right now, we're not complete, and we're not perfect, and we're going to change again, because life changes us. I love the humility, I love the humanness of that statement. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. Again, the focus on connection. And the sixth value, equity. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. That's the first principle, language, worth has become worthiness, and it suddenly is inclusive of all of our heritage. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. May it be so. So that, dear ones, are our eight principles transformed into six values. Interdependence, pluralism, justice, transformation, generosity, equity, at the center of which, what's that word at the center? Love. love. And I love that the chalice is there too. So, my dear ones, these are the proposed changes. This past June, our National General Assembly voted 87% in favor of spending this next year talking about and I'm sure wrestling with these proposed changes. Then they will need to be approved or voted down at the June 2024 National General Assembly, which will be online this year, which means everybody who wants to participate can do so from their couch at home. That's the most democratic way to make something a change like this. As I said before, and I truly, truly, truly mean this, you have permission to love it, you have permission to hate it. You have permission to feel so-so eh, about it, to be not sure what you feel, or to feel sad, or angry, or happy, or excited about it. My first reaction was to dislike it very much. And I admit, I still struggle with some of this change because change is hard and change brings the loss of something that we are used to. Those principles 
are all I know of Unitarian Universalism. They're what brought me through the door. They're what led me to become ordained to serve as a minister. But the times are a-changing. My impression after this past June's vote is that the train has left the station. There is so much positive momentum nationally that I believe this is the direction that we are heading collectively. Eight principles to six values with love at the center. But here's the thing, and this is what allowed me to get to a place of peace and affirmation and support. Principles, values, they're all just words. Some have changed, but the essence of Unitarian Universalism is still there. It's still here. What we know and love and experience, it's still here. It's just that different words are being used to describe it. Words that might be here for a while, and then they too will change for another time and another relevancy. What is permanent is the essence and the experience of Unitarian Universalism. We have confidence in that continuity that spans all time. Let me also say that I'm really getting excited to see what these new words are going to awaken within us, among us, and beyond us. Who will we collectively become because of it? Our 1984 principles changed Unitarian Universalism and made us better. I have no doubt that our new 2024 values will do the same. We will be changed and we will be better. But most importantly for me, many of our young people and black, indigenous, people of color, religious professionals want this. They say they need this for their future. They are the ones who will carry Unitarian Universalism into the next generation. I'm not going to try to keep it in the past when the future is so clearly beckoning through their leadership. So I'm going to wholeheartedly trust and follow their leadership. And so, a year of talking about this begins in Unitarian Universalist congregations around the country. At UU Fresno, it begins after today's service. I'll be at a discussion table on this side of the sanctuary, and for those who wish, I look forward to the beginning of that discussion there, we will have other opportunities to discuss both from our Alluvial Avenue campus and, of course, from our beloved online campus. And as we do think about this and wrestle with this and discuss this, may we remember Unitarian Universalism is confidence in a continuity that spans all time. It is respectful of the past, but not limited to it. It is trust in growing and conspiracy with change. Kaya sea, bendito sea. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen.